Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dressing Angel here with A&A Deluxe Detail based out of Northeast Los Angeles area. And today we're gonna let you know how we got into the detailing game. All right guys, how long have you guys been detailing and what got you started? So we, I personally started detailing professionally at CarMax about four years ago. But I've been, grew, I grew up cleaning my, like helping my dad clean his car, helping my brother clean his car. So the interior game was kind of something I already knew and I just applied the professional aspect of it. I've been detailing for four years as well. Um, I didn't do it at CarMax with my bro right here, but I was doing it on my personal cars and anything that he learned, he taught me. So as the years went on, we kind of grew that. Yeah. So how did you guys meet? Dang, so this goes way back to when me and my boy used to face each other in Little League, you know? The Saturday battles, parents, you know, wake up in the morning, get the snacks ready, wake up, put your jersey on. And me and my boy used to go out and play some historic, pretty badass games that we could remember to this day. So you guys have known each other for like your entire life? About 10 years now. 10 years? Yeah, it's about. So when you first started your business, with what equipment did you start with? Uh, we started with a pressure washer, a vacuum, the foamer, and I think that's about it. Like those are the main three things. You know, we didn't have a truck yet. We didn't have any extractor. We didn't have our drills. So we were just working with what we got and putting out the best results we could possible. So what was the hardest thing about working from home? Uh, the hardest thing was probably getting the people to go there and having them trust that that was like a safe location or you know anywhere they can be at. Oh, so they would drive to your house and yeah. you detail it at your house? Yeah, I would detail in yeah. my, my front yard, well my parents front yard and yeah whoever was willing to come by and drop it off that's how we started. So that's before you, you went mobile? Yes. Yeah, that's how we started like I think three months, three to four months at in front of my house. Oh, okay. So what would you tell your customers if they wanted a mobile service but you weren't mobile? We would just tell them that we weren't mobile. We would just okay. be straight up. We would just be like, hey, sorry. Yeah. We're, unfortunately, we're not mobile yet. We're only taking, we're only um, doing house calls. House calls. Not house calls, but like we were drop offs. Drop offs, drop -offs. there we go. And some people would do it and most of the time they wouldn't, but. but so do you feel because you were working from home or you were doing drop-offs, did you do you feel that you lost business because of that or did you gain business? We definitely were limited, like, you know, we were not able to attend everybody at work, maybe they're at their house, they're busy, clean up, so we were just able to work with what we got and who was willing to give us their time. So when they, they would drop off their cars, would customers stick around or were they taking over back home or back work or? It would vary. Right. Yeah, some people would, uh, the Galleria, it was a couple miles down, so they would hop in a Lyft or Uber and go to the Galleria, or some people even stuck around and they would just sit there. Sometimes they would talk, sometimes they would just be on their phone. Would but it get weird when people No, no it, it wasn't weird for us because we're pretty hospitable and we can talk to someone and, you know, try to make them feel like they're our yeah. friend or, you know, that we're, we're cool people. Yeah, like we don't mind making friends, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So did you guys have like chairs and water for the customers or no? I would provide them, like I'll put we would them ask, chair. Yeah, for sure. I'll get a water bottle from inside. Yeah. Customer Definitely, service. yeah. So since you're working from home, would your neighbors get upset or was it more on the down low that you were do doing it from home? Um, I would say no one really complained or anything, but I'm pretty sure there was those, you know, grumpy people who like to stay in at 11 a.m. or 12 a.m., 12 p.m. and, you know, we're going at it with the pressure washer at 8 in the morning, 10 mm -hmm. in the morning, so, uh, so I guess we'll bother those people only, but other than that, yeah, no big problem. So what made you take detailing seriously? What made you take it to the next level from your house to going mobile? What, what was the factor that? factor uh, well we always did want to go mobile from the beginning but mm -hmm. we still needed to learn some things we didn't have the funds yet you know we still needed to grow like our business like we needed to get our name out even if it was small we at least needed to build some type of foundation so do you feel that working from home built your clientele list yes yeah definitely yeah. definitely because we have a lot of a good amount of clients that we still do today that they used to come yeah, by yeah, back, back then so what was the first piece of, a, of professional equipment when you started? Like what was the first piece I guess you upgraded? Uh, uh, 
the polisher. Polisher? We went from a Mark III or, or a, a Torque to a Mark III, which is the Rupes Mark III. It's pretty popular. Pretty like professional. Yeah. So right now, are you guys part-time detailers or full-time detailers? Full-time. Okay. Full seven time days if we could. Seven days a week? Yeah, we got seven days. We, there, was a, there was a cool minute where we are going seven days straight for at least three weeks, four weeks straight. Yeah. yeah. So we don't really have a day off unless it's like yeah. slow or dead, so. Or, or we have the ability to, you know, if like one or two people want it on Sunday, we'll be like, hey, can we do Monday? And they're more than willing to do Monday. A lot of people wait for our work. So you mentioned initially that you guys didn't have the funds to, to go mobile. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys find the capital to invest into your business? Just saving what we would make at the house. No. Yeah, like we wouldn't get that money and go spend it, or go out and, you know, go drink or just have fun, you know. We were just, we were very disciplined, you know. We were very locked in and every day we knew, well, we knew we had to do something to upgrade the business. And how, how did you keep that discipline? Discipline. Are you guys counting it on each other? Yeah, just keeping... Else? Yeah. Important, well, uh, most importantly, yes, keeping each other, holding each other accountable. Mm -hmm. But also, secondly, always having the, the the biggest goal in mind, which is, you know, to be more than, you know, just two detailers, you know. It's way, we imagine, we, we started this to be bigger than just two detailers. Yeah. Like we're, we want a shop, we want workers, we want yeah. There's a, there's a bigger vision than Find a product, than just anything this, that we yeah, do, you know, everything. So is going full time what you expected? Uh -huh. No. No. I would say no because I didn't even know what to expect at first. We were kind of just had the time to do it so yeah I never been a manager never had no like higher no. position while I was in charge of a company or someone else's company so now that we're in charge of ours we gotta make very smart decisions and responsible decisions yeah. so what's the hardest thing about your detailing business after one year of going all in what's one hard thing yeah the hardest thing I just stay trying to stay consistent keeping that keeping that high um, clientele like keeping our phones busy, keeping our thing busy with the paint corrections, booking ceramic coats, booking more than the average detail. So what's the next goal for your detailing business? I think our next goal is what we're doing right now. We're just trying to um, provide a good YouTube channel where people could look at us and enjoy what we do and also learn from what we do to become a better person or just a better detailer. There you guys have it. That is our story, how we got into the detailing business. Let, if, if you have any advice, let us know in the comments below and let us know how you started your detailing business. And if you want to continue to follow our journey, subscribe, like, and follow us on Instagram at ANA Deluxe Detail. And make sure to stay tuned for the next one.